All right, so again, uh, tonight we're gonna be talking about very cool um, concept in chess, openings that are based on concepts and pawn structures. And I'm gonna be presenting to you the exchange Karakan structure, which you actually can get it from many, many openings. As a matter of fact, uh, the main game that we're gonna be looking at as uh, between the two extremely talented juniors. Well, I guess Nicholas Cheka is no longer junior, but you know he was basically, as far as, <laughs> as, far as I remember, was one of the promising US uh, chess school students a long time ago, right, Greg? So, and of course, Nihal Sarian does not need to be introduced. This guy is just a genius. Uh, he is performing extremely well you know, in Blitz and World Rapid, uh, in Blitz event, I mean, this guy is really, really strong. So this game is actually, I think, a Blitz game. So we're not gonna, you know, treat these guys too harshly, but we're gonna be using this as an example to talk about the resultant pawn structures. Okay, so let's start. So the exchange Karakon is actually, believe it or not, not does not start in this game with the move e4 it starts with the move d4 okay so who can guess how on earth are we going to get the exchange caracon from d4 opening all right if you think you know your answer you can type your answer in the chat so i'm looking at the chat here aha uh -huh, so people are saying of course, black is going to play c6, you're going to play e4, we're going to play d5, and this is called the Kara. All right, so let's see if you are correct. d5, nope. First move is not c6 from Nicholas Cheka. All right, any guesses which opening is going to transpose to the exchange Karakan before I give you any more hints? Good job, yes. Uh, some people are getting this. Good job, good job, Jessica. It's the London, the London system, the beloved or maybe the hated London system. Usually people are in the two categories. You either hate the London or you're like, okay, this is a pretty good opening. I like this. So knight f3, knight f6, and bishop f4. All right, so let's see how many people are big fan uh, on the, of the London system. How many people are not so much? Okay, so Jed said not so loved. No, no good. Okay, so it looks like, <laughs> looks like we have a lot of haters out there of the London. Not too many people like the London. It's one of those openings, yeah, like I said, that really people are usually split into like 50-50 category. You either love it or you hate it. Uh, but let's see. We're not going to really talk about the London system today. We're going to talk about the move C5, E3, and look what happens next. In the next few moves, we're going to get a very interesting position. Nice. It lets black equalize too easily, but it's easy to study. Okay, that sounds good. So knight D, bd2. So you guys know what's coming, right? C takes D. This is how we get the exchange Karakon pawn formation. E takes D, bishop g4. Now, why on earth would we get the bishop to g4 and not put the pawn on e6? This is really, really basic question. You guys are all strong enough to answer that. But I'm going to throw it out there anyways to get you warmed up. Who can answer this question? Exactly, yeah, most of you know the answer to this one. Even though you open up the bishop on f8, you actually lock this guy. And this is a pretty bad or pretty sad French. In the French, at least you have a pawn on c5 doing something. Uh, here you don't have that c pawn. This is a pretty sad position, the bishop is blocked. So the bishop has to go outside the pawn chain. And after the move c3, e6, yeah, Actually, somebody asked a good question. How is this different from the Carlsbad structure? It's actually honestly not that different if you flip white and black, if you flip the side, right? We have 
like if you think black is now white, it's kind of like a Carlsbad in the reverse. So guess what's happening? Very similar. And you guys probably have heard many, many lectures on the Carlsbad pawn structure. And of course, the minority attack is what everybody knows. This is the long-term plan. But we're actually going to be talking a little bit more in depth. Not We all know what Black's plan uh, is, but it's not obvious what's going to be White's plan. And uh, certain plans are actually not good in the exchange Caracon. So we'll get to that shortly. But first, let me go make a couple more moves. Queen b3, attacking the pawn. First tactical question, OK? Tactics question. Uh, queen c8 is played in the game. So my question is, what happens if queen d7? This is a very basic question. How good are your tactics? Yep, and you guys are very sharp today. Exceptionally accurate move knight e5 is the right way to do it. Knight takes, pawn takes, knight's hit, knight b5 is, I mean, bishop b5 is next. See you later, you win the game. Believe it or not, it is game over already after knight e5. So this is a really interesting little trap. Of course, uh, Nicholas does not fall for the trap. He plays queen c8. And here we guys, now you may wonder, okay, this looks like an exchange Karakhan, but how do we actually get the regular move order? So this is kind of cool to go back to the very beginning and to compare this position with e4, c6. So you see this e4, c6 a lot, this exchange caro, bishop d3 first to stop bishop f5, knight c6, c3, knight f6. I have to say queen c7 is just as popular to stop bishop f4. It leads to slightly different positions. White does have an option to play knight e2 here, or sometimes even they play h3, knight f3 to try to use this tempo to stop the bishop from getting to g4. And then black in turn plays g6 and bishop f5. So this is kind of another way to get the bishop out. Anyways, so knight f6 is the main line, bishop f4, bishop g4, queen b3 hitting that pawn. Here queen d7 is actually quite playable, which is not a bad move at all. But queen c8 is gonna get us the same exact position. Boom, boom, boom. Guess what? We're at exactly the same position. So being able to understand how one opening can transpose to another opening and understand certain nuances. For example, here, queen d7 is possible where it wasn't possible in the other line. So it's quite interesting to know and compare various positions, okay? Now, I will also show you, if we have time, another opening where you can actually get, trap a lot of people using this way, but it's completely unrelated to the exchange care. Kind of just thought about this opening now, but the more openings you know, the more positions you learn, the more middle game positions, the easier it is for you to navigate the labyrinth of chess openings. So, okay. So we can get this position more or less easily with white and with black. Let's get back to our main game. So the move order, of course, is the London system. And we are going to be talking about the middle game today, not necessarily about the nuances of the opening. But of course, these days, there is no such thing right, as the middle game in chess. Because when you study openings, you go pretty deep, sometimes even to the end game, of course, as our friend Sam Shanklin, he did the whole course on the Berlin endgame, right? I mean, that's an opening where you go directly into the endgame. So anyway, so queen c8, bishop d3, bishop e7, white castles, and black castles. We're going to be talking a, lot, a little bit about bishop h5 as well. But before we get to bishop h5, let's again stick to the main line. This is what happened in their game. And white plays rook f e1. My question is evaluate the position. Okay. What is white's plan? So think about what should be white doing. Of course, what is black's plan? So why don't you take a moment or two and type your answer in the chat for me? 
Okay, I'm gonna read some of the answers as I'm seeing them come in. I think White is going to utilize his advantage in the center with knight e5. Very nice, okay, so you get a point for noticing this beautiful outpost. That's definitely uh, may come in handy in the future. Black plans to set up minority attack. Of course, we know that Black wants to do minority attack. It's not easy, right? To get this going, we may need to play six, but we kind of know what Black wants to do. Okay, good job. Uh, Black should activate his dark square bishop with bishop d8 to c7. I've never seen this plan before, actually, guys. This is an interesting plan. Very interesting. I've never seen this plan before myself. Okay, let's see what other people are saying. Okay, another uh, minority attack vote there. Let's see if there are any other updates. Rook lift, bishop g4 trade-off. Minority attack again. Aha, uh -huh, very nice. Yeah, this plan is very common. So uh, s some people are saying, well, Black's got really this annoying bishop to d3. We got to neutralize that. Black got to play this bishop h5, bishop g6 idea. And this is actually, guys, uh, I would say number one priority. Okay, this is uh, one way to fight against this knight e5. And then if knight takes pawn, takes queen c2 idea to try to get this bishop traded off. So once that bishop is gone, it's less dangerous uh, for white to start to launch the attack. White is going to put pressure on the queen side. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, there are some interesting possibilities how white can put pressure on the queen side. We're going to be talking a little bit about pressure on the queen side too. And then white can attack on the king side. Yep. And yes, this is another good point. We uh, you hear me talk a lot about statics and dynamics in chess. When somebody says black is happy to trade queens and go into the end game, that's a sign of a static advantage, right? When you have a better end game. Now that you know that white's plan is to play against the king, well, most common plan, I would say, trading queens definitely will benefit black. Here is one simple uh, in case you need like a little bit of a shortcut, this is the shortcut that I like to share with my students, is you create an arrow, uh, you draw the arrow rather from the, you know, the very base of your point chain. And you see where that arrow points, it points to the enemy king. The simple answer is white's long-term plan is to attack the enemy king. And then vice versa, black, you draw the arrow here. Black wants to play on the queen side, ideally minority attack. All right, so I, I'd say most of you guys have gotten um, all of these ideas. You are pretty you know, familiar with it. Again, this is very common to the Carlsbad in reversed ideas. So let's see these plans in action and see what's going to happen next. Is knight a4 to c4? Yep, we're actually going to see this idea in the game. So yeah, good job noticing this plan as well. Bishop h5, okay, we talked about Bishop h5. Nicholas Cheka plays this relatively quickly, this move. Okay, and now h3, an interesting waiting move. What is the point of the move h3? Unclear for now, right? Unclear, maybe a loft, yeah, for the king, but I'm actually guessing Nihal Sarin has played this position Maybe not the first time, because to me, at least the first part of the plan that he demonstrates is very similar to what I see with very powerful engines. And this plan, I have never seen myself. Okay, I have never seen this plan myself, but it's extremely powerful plan. Okay, H3 is just kind of like a waiting move, honestly. It's not part of our plan. <laughs> But it is definitely Nihal knows what, what he's doing. Okay, so bishop g6. And now first question is, do you trade on g6? Or do you retreat, let's say, to e2 or, or f1 or b5?
Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Trade, retreating makes the g6 bishop stronger. Ah, some people are saying retreat to f1. Mm -hmm. So we have a not obvious choice already for white player. For Nihal, the, the, the choice is pretty clear, guys, as you're going to see what happened in the game. But if you're not quite sure what to do, this is an instructive moment. Okay, I would say trade because the bishop on g6 is quite strong. Okay, let's see what others are saying in there. C4, whoa. All right, C4. I'm not sure about C4, honestly. Again, remember we talked about statics in chess. Statics is when you create pawn weaknesses. Uh, this may be not well-timed push. Of course, there's knight a5, there is dc4. You get yourself iqp. Be very, very careful to pull, pull, uh, to play c4. Yeah, not, bishop f1, I would tell you guys, is not a good move. Um, it's not a good move. And, of course, the main reason is this bishop is basically left out of the game for a long time. It's not really that useful. You don't really need to play for c4. The correct answer is trade. All right, so here is the real deal. It feels as though Black's king is extremely safe. At least to me, it feels like that. And then Black basically has, a, you know, what is, I, I would call one-sided uh, minority attack. You know, just slowly start pushing those pawns. The king looks pretty safe. All right. Some of you may agree with me. You know, this looks pretty safe for Black. But the next move is going to shock. Well, it shocked me for sure. It may shock you as well. Nikhal Sarin plays queen b5. Queen b5. Now, for anyone who understands Black's plan, and I'm sure Nikhal Sarin has studied minority attack, to me, this looks like, what are you doing? You're inviting this a6, b5 pawn storm. You're wasting a tempo. and yeah, and I don't really understand this move. Although, is it the best move according to the powerful engines? I've analyzed this game in detail. Okay, yeah, one of you said the correct, the correct idea. What is the idea of this move? I would have to say it's a pretty deep idea. Yep, correct. So people are guessing. Yes, correct. Queen is being redirected to d3. So it's a funny redirection of the queen to d3. Okay. But the point is, Nihal understands the action is happening on the king side. We need the queen on d3 to help out the attack. All right. Of course, don't ask. Nicholas twice to play a6. This is part of his plan. Queen gets redirected to d3. And here, guys, we come across kind of a... Yeah, queen c2 may allow a knight before. Yeah. Here come, comes kind of a major fork, I would say, on the road for black. Do we play b5? Or do we play knight a5? Not easy to answer this question without any kind of analysis. In the game, knight a5 has been played, but let's go back and look at the move b5 for a little bit. What would you play as white? What would you play as white? That's my question. Very logical move b5. And this is the first very, very tough question of today's uh, lecture. So the answer... You know, by the answer that you will give me, that's going to tell me a lot of how well do you know the Carlsbad pawn structure. Because this idea is unlike anything you've ever seen before. And it's White's best move. Okay. Yeah, of course, knight e5 is too easy. Knight e5 is too easy. That's not the right move. The idea is unlike you've ever seen before. <laughs> yeah, just by the way, I'm saying you got the move correct, Jed. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, Timothy, good job. Yeah, Ryan, good job. All right, uh, it's not A4, guys, not A4, not Knight H2. Think outside the box. If you've never seen this idea before, it's gonna shock you. It's gonna shock you to your core. Yeah, Kavish, excellent. Good job, guys. Queen B1, A4, Queen A2, okay, well, not maybe, Maybe in, in, in the next, uh, you know, 2000 years, <laughs> queen d1 and a4 may, may be the, the way of the future, but no, it's a little bit more straightforward than that. Yep, so most people got this one correct after my massive hint, it's the move b4. And of course you're gonna tell me, but hey, didn't you tell me your plan is to play on the king side? You have this whole arrows business. Well, chess is not about one, dimensional plans. Our plans change based on circumstances. This idea to play B4 in the Carlsbad, if you remember with the Carlsbad, the reverse color, black plays B5, knight B6, knight C4, it actually establishes this important outpost. And this guy does not have enough time to get to C4. We're going to play A4 at the right moment. So you know, our main move here is uh, a5. And I'm going to ask you a question. How would you play as white here? This is an important moment. You had to anticipate this during your guessing. How would you play as white? Ah, a3. Be careful. A3 is not the best move think a little bit about punishment you got to punish black for this play black wasn't ready to launch the minority attack not queen takes b5 no black is actually getting lots of counterplay after a takes b there nope not a3 not queen takes b5 that's right yes i think people are catching up it's uh very, very powerful and simple move A4. Yeah, believe it or not, this is like already like close to winning position according to the engine. A takes B is coming and black is just collapsing. And if B takes A, B5. Yeah, so the big surprise is in the Carlsbad, sometimes you can play on the other side, right? So if you are playing black in the Carlsbad structure, this is how you would get this position. With white, it's the exchange Karakon. Yeah, so this is a very important moment. That's why uh, Nicholas Cheka plays this move, very important move, knight a5, to prevent this b4 uh, idea after b5. And here comes the next move. Maybe shocking, maybe not. Knight e5, not shocking. This is too easy. Too easy, knight e5. Of course, the knight has left the c6 square. We talked about this outpost, very handy outpost. Here comes b5, okay. I used to do this all the time, a long time ago. Okay, so Adi knows his ideas. Yeah, this B4, a good job. Okay, well, B4 is tempting, of course, but uh, now you have to deal with this Knight C4. You, you get this backwards pawn, not as simple as before. The Knight takes D2, Knight E4 threat. <laughs> not in a good way, I see. Okay, let's focus now on the next one. What would you play as white? What would you play as white? As I said, questions do get pretty difficult. Um, the next move is a shocker to me at least. But once you know white's plan, it's actually rather easy. Once you've studied this game. Okay, close. So think about the king side now. Forget about the queen side for a bit. Okay, interesting idea, Naranian. Yeah, try to do that. Maybe. G4, G5, just crush him. Okay, that sounds easy. What if after G5, I play like knight D7 or knight H5? Not sure if I get crushed that easily. Ah, Jed is onto something. Aha, uh -huh, very nice. Yeah, so the move is actually not very easy. Uh, no, we're not ready, Jessica, for, for crazy sacks like knight G6. I think it's just quite, it's it's interesting, but I don't think it's enough. I think there's queen, 
you know, always there's queen e8, rook f7 at the end, right? We don't have enough attackers. The move is h4, x clam. How many of you are a little bit shocked by this move h4? Because if you if recall, he did play h3 a while back. Yes, me too. I'm also a little bit surprised. It's not like h5 is a threat at the moment. We got the pawn and a knight there. What? Yeah, that's the question I ask myself too. Again, guys, queen b5 to d3 transfer and this move h4 are the best moves in the position, according to the super engines that I analyzed this game with. Nihal Sarin has done his homework. He has worked on his openings, even though he plays you know, thousands of blitz and bullet games online. He definitely has done his homework. And this setup is very interesting. What he wants to do at some point, transfer the queen maybe to h3, right? At some point, maybe g4. Another idea is rook transfer. And then you want to play for g4, h5. All right, so this is quite important moment. Uh, remember this idea, this h4, because we're going to come back to this later, but just kind of pick, make, make a mental picture of this concept because it's going to come in handy when we look at some other games. This is high quality for Blitz game. Well, yeah, I guess so. Although we're going to see some mistakes and blunders later on, but so far, yes, I think this is all uh, Nihal's prep. He might have prepared for somebody else or for specifically for this game. And of course, Nicholas Cheka says, what's the big deal, my friend? I've got everything covered, knight c4. And here, believe it or not, <laughs> Siren played two perfect, well, maybe three perfect moves according to the engine. This queen b5 transfer, knight e5, h4 was perfect. Now he makes a very uncharacteristic mistake and he loses the... Uh, let's say the momentum of the game. From now on, after his mistake, black is going to take over the edge. Black will have the edge. Black will take over the initiative. And uh, Nihal Sarin will have to defend for many, many moves. Okay. So what did he play? I think uh, he might have, you know, I don't think he did his homework, right? Because he clearly didn't quite know what to play next. B3, yeah, B3 is a pretty bad move. Uh, knight takes D2, have the C3 weakness. Knight takes C4 is a bad move or a good move? Knight E takes C4, you said. Knight DF3, well, B2 hangs, be careful. Well, actually, I did not tell you what he played. I just said, how can you improve in Siren's play? So in the game, he played rook B1. Uh, he could have still fixed this mistake later on. The correct move is knight takes, knight d takes c4. Best move in the position by far. Okay, so the difference, I'll tell you the difference. After rook a, b1, bishop d6, he played b3. That's it, guys. White's advantage is not only gone, black has the initiative. So the, co the combo of these two moves is absolutely horrible, and you'll see why shortly. But I want to examine a little bit what he really planned. Maybe he kind of forgot about his plan, but the key is you want to take on c4. So black has you know two ways. I mean, this is the most logical. You have the b-file pressure. OK, and now I said, let's examine this position for a little bit longer. Queen h3. What is White's attack and plan? Well, we talked about this. We talked about this already. What is your plan? Exactly, yeah, just try to get g4, h5 going. Nothing really, nothing too special. And then the rook lift, yeah. So I looked a little bit about this position with rook b8, rook e2. You have to be a little careful. This is your weakness. And black usually will double or triple on the b file. Now I like this move, rook f1. Okay, at first it looks a little funky, but the point is after, let's say, queen b7, we play bishop c1. Yes, that's the point. Now that's it. We've sealed 
this side of the board. You see, this is like a big seal. Nothing gets in, right? No counterplay. And guess what? Everyone is ready. Even the bishop participates in the attack to start the pawn storm. That's it. Black has absolutely no way to stop this pawn storm. Reminds me a little bit of like those Kings Indian when you're black, right? You just start the pawn storm. Your opponent just has absolutely nothing, to, you know, to stop it with. Except there, usually uh, there's counterplay. Here, there's no counterplay for black. So I've looked at this. Looks pretty bad for black, honestly. And uh, if he doesn't play this, let's say he plays knight d7. That's my main line. I just say knight f3. Knight f6, let's say black says, okay, I don't mind the draw. Of course, g4 with a big attack. Pretty pathetic position for black. Very difficult to stop h5. Yeah, so that's what Nihal Sarin should have done. But one slip and everything gets changed. Everything gets changed in terms of the eval. Okay, so rook a beyond. He can still fix his mistake, by the way, guys. He can still do this. And after pawn takes, he can just swing the queen over again. Of course, here it's not as simple. There's some knight d7, although here we have some tactics. So this is quite difficult for black also, I would say. I think white's a bit better. Um, if we can get g4 going, that would be great. So this is actually a tactic, knight g6. OK, so let's see what happened in the game. So he makes uh, an inaccurate move. He's not lost, of course. He also makes another inaccurate move. That's it. The shift of the advantage is obvious. Bishop takes d2, knight e4, and black sort of says, OK, well, your attack is nowhere to be seen. I've got a, some nice targets, right? I've got a pretty good structure with this nice bishop, nice knight. So now we're going to see the other side of Nihal Sarin, his defensive side. So he goes back to f3. He realized something has gone wrong. Queen d8, OK, reasonable move. Bishop g5. And here I said, what would you play as black? Here, black has a decisive advantage if he plays his next move correct. Decisive advantage, like pretty big one. That's what I said. It's like a blitz game, so we're not going to be too harsh about the players. Let's see if you can find black's best move. Yep, it is simple move, Adi. Yeah, it's actually a quite simple move, guys. It's not like you got to really go deep here. Yeah, the move is actually queen a5. Hidden here, hidden there. I honestly already don't see defense. How white can save a pawn. OK, in the game, black played queen c7 gives white a chance to dig in rook c1 bishop d2 everyone's going backwards okay now queen a5 but luckily there's a rook c2 rook c6 there is no doubt black is the one pressing okay but nihal sarin is defending really well he doubled doubled and now put your defensive hats on okay guys well you messed up you didn't get a, you know, you got a bad position in the middle game. White is clearly worse. How can you fight on? How can you fight on? This is probably one of the uh, strongest point of an elite player. You know, somebody who is in the top 10, top 20. Once they get into a bad position, they're extremely creative and not falling apart. Okay, yeah, good, good job. I see some good answers there. Yep, last ditch effort. Okay. So a couple, couple of people already I see answering this correctly. So the move is immediate c4. There's no need to play bishop e1. Yes, just free yourself. This is your weakness. This is your only chance of the game to get rid of this weakness. Do it. Don't be afraid of knight takes d2. That's what happened. OK, you're still pretty tied up, but at least you want to get rid of that c pawn. Pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, and now knight takes c4. I already said it's about equal here, but white is not fully out of the woods because there is a big pin going on 
we are pinned all over with this knight on c4. There's the C file pressure. There is this pressure. Okay, what is black's threat? How can you stop it? Okay, so this is my question to everyone. Again, we're not fully out of the woods. I believe you have exactly three moves, three moves that you are not worth. Nihal plays one of those three moves, but maybe you can find at least one of them. If you don't play one out of these three moves, you may be just lost, honestly, because there is a very kind of thread. Yeah, okay, so first let's understand what the threat is. Well, knight takes d6, be careful, you may drop your queen. Well, bishop a3 is not a true threat, right? Queen can take on a3. It's bishop f4, yeah. That's a simple threat, okay? So how can we deal with that? Yeah, the simplest move is of course g3. That's one out of the three moves. I think that's what he played in the game. But guess what? This also does the trick. You see the point after bishop here you can take, and now you have this intermezzo, knight e3. That saves the day and you're fine. And so g3, Queen b3, there's one more move, one more move that also saves the day. Yes, <laughs> queen f1 also works with idea knight e3. How funny is this looking move? What? Yep, that's it. That works. Uh, knight e5, what is wrong with knight e5? Let's try to understand. So if queen takes d3, you're gonna take on c6 intermezzo. So let's try to understand what is wrong with this move. Can I take here? And if you take there, can I take here? No, because you're going to take with the rook. I don't see. I don't think. Okay. So what is wrong with this? Move? This move is probably not good, but I can't quite. Okay. So if we take on C2 first, you would have to take with the rook. Wait, but then you lose. Then you lose. If you take on B5, you lose. You're probably going to lose this one. Yeah, so I, I think this is just lost, right? Okay, so this is easy. Too easy, guys. 95 is too easy. Yeah, that's what I said. Only three moves. Wait. Everything else is, is just lost. What about knight b2? Knight b2? Okay, let's look at knight b2. It looks a little weird. The first thought that pops into my mind is queen b2. Does this work? If you take, I take care. It looks like game over, no? Wait, wait, but what about if I take the rook? Wait, I take on c1 and you resign? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, no, Nihal is, is pretty good at, ta at tactics, guys. So let's see what happened. Okay, he did play g3, but okay, bishop e7. The pin is still there. He says, all right, I've got to unpin myself. Queen b3. All right, this is an important move. Queen b3. Queen d5 is played. Okay, black is still trying to squeeze a win here, but look at that next move. Boom, knight e5. Here comes a really interesting point of the game. Queen takes b3. And now, boom, intermezzo. Knight takes e6. Believe it or not, black has only one move, which actually Nicholas missed. He, he blundered with his next move here. Okay, type your, uh, type your move please in the chat so everyone has a chance to think. Yeah, Timothy got it. That's the only move that saves black here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Jed, I, yeah, I'm also you are getting this. Now, in the game, he played a losing move. I'll show you why. Queen a3 is a terrible move, and I'll show you why. But queen takes c2 is the only move. Yep. Black stays in the game. Knight takes e7, so what? You just play king f8. Rook takes c2. Okay, what's the big deal? We can just start activating our king. So this is fine. Position is probably equal. Okay, but why is his move bad? Queen a3 looks pretty good. He has a queen up at the moment. Well, the problem is you had to value two rooks versus king. Well, here's a trivial trivia question, rather. There is one player recently who perhaps did not evaluate two rooks versus queen, but in a totally different end game, right? You might know the answer to that. Who is that player? Aronian? I'm not aware of Aronian. No, like a big, big event that happened recently. Two rooks versus queen. Magnus, yes, world. Oh, oh, the world rapid, there was a two rooks versus queen. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, the Magnus Nepo game. That's the one I'm talking about. Remember Nepo allowed in the middle game, this queen takes c8 situation. He had equal material. Well, guess what? He ended up... Uh, after a twisty turny game, I mean, he ended up losing that one, right? Well, this is much, much worse, okay? It's not like that game where Nepo had, you know, pretty good compensation for the, you know, queen for the two rooks here. It's game over. It's completely game over. Rook C to C7, we have a nice target. And here I ask, what is... Uh, it's an easy win for white. Can you finish black off? There's actually more than one move here that wins, but uh, Nihal Sarin's move is the best and the easiest. That's it, guys. Lights out for black. So there's a major threat going here. There's also this threat comes in handy. Uh, the game lasted only for a couple of moves. He could have played this, G5. Okay, but this is much simpler. You know, you, you always want to simplify, right? When you're ahead, and the two rooks, that's the advantage that the two rooks have over the queen. You can constantly keep creating threats to the pawn and the queen, and eventually you will win. So the game finished like this. Rook f6 takes rook g5 checkmate. Yep, so that's how Nihal Sarin has won this game. So first of all, superb opening prep. Right, this queen b5, queen g3 idea, and this h4. Then he faltered in that middle game with this rook b1, b3. He sort of maybe didn't trust the, his instinct to take on c4. Maybe he just played too passively. Then he defended like a beast, and then Nicholas Cheka made only one mistake, right? The entire game, this queen a3 move, and that's it. So you see, even at the blitz, strong players, strong blitz players, they play high quality games. Now, as a bonus thing, now that we, I said, let me go back to this critical moment here, this kind of important concept. Let me go back, back, back. I said, remember this position with the port on h4. Okay, so remember this position with the port on h4. So let's go back. Okay, and this queen transfer to d3, very important, right? Let's go way back here, and I'm going to ask you a question. What about this bishop h5 move. Let's see, after castles. Now, who plays bishop h5? Uh, some random people named Magnus, Magnus, Wesley, Magnus, Wesley, Wesley, Topolov, Ivanchuk, Isipenko. Uh, just some random people. <laughs> now, what we know, armed with the knowledge, right, that we already have here. How can we play this position with white? Okay, this is important, right? Being able to apply the lessons we just learned to position that's extremely topical. I mean, look at these monsters, right? Extremely topical. So let's think about it together. 
So we're going to play bishop h5. We're probably not going to play knight e5 because we want to play rook f e1 first, right? OK. Make sense? Well, there is castles or bishop g6. Well, bishop g6 is what most stronger players play. I mean, you could have castled earlier. OK, we're going to take. OK, there is. Look at that, Andrew Tank. Bishop f1 has been tried. No, 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 no. We don't do this. We take. OK, hg. Now is the trick question. Well, not, not really a trick question, but maybe you have to be, you have to trick your opponent into transposing into our Nihal Sarin idea. OK, lots of strong players, by the way. Uh, queen, D, queen b5, queen d3 is very, very logical. Yeah, you guys are onto something here. Queen b5, a6, queen d3. Most players as black, by the way, there are no games already in this push. Yeah. Most players as black will think, what is this guy doing? Queen b5, queen d3. He doesn't know what he's doing. They're going to castle. And guess what? Uh, yeah, even here, there's really not too many games. H4, we could have played H3, give our opponent a free move. That transposes to the Nihal Siren games. He actually had another game. But guess what? H4 is very, very smart. We just tricked our opponent. It could be Magnus, right? It could be Wesley. It could be any one of these top guys. And we just tricked them into getting the tempo up in a position that we know tempo down is even good for white if you know the main ideas. So this is how you apply your opening knowledge, right? So if you're black and you're aware of this, right? You're aware of this business, you're really scared to castle. Interesting enough. And vice versa, hold on a second. You may, when you think, wait, wait a second, wait a second. Well, I'm going to play GH4 first, which actually has been played um, hasn't been played once, has been played once by, I don't know who these players are. And then after castles, you can say, ha ha, I'm going to transfer the queen. So yep, you can do both of these ideas. And this is, hasn't really been played. Of course, you can still play this move h3. Okay, they're probably going to castle. And now, guess what? Don't do knight e5. Where is the queen b5? Yep, queen b5 scores 66%. That's the Nihal Sarin position, same exact position. So you see, understanding these, these nuances, right, is extremely important in opening theory. If we did not examine the Nihal Sarin game against Cheka in detail, when we get this position, we would not know what to do as white. You know, we may play what everybody else is playing, this 95 movement, and get absolutely nothing. So yes, starting with queen b5 is even more clever. Because after a6, queen d3 castles, we don't waste an entire tempo. Nothing wrong with the move h3, as we discussed. And even the move h4 is playable. All right, so any questions for me about any of these plans? And like I said, I do have a little bonus, maybe something for everyone. Uh, a little bonus uh, as I have time, a different opening. So there are no questions. Because as I was thinking about understanding the nuances of every opening, this is very important nuance. So let me go all the way back to the beginning. And I want to share with you the bonus that I recently discovered. Here is the little bonus. So everybody uh, has big problem against the Grunfeld, right? Everybody has a big problem against the Grunfeld. Let's say you are a Fianchero player and you get some positions like this, like this in the Grunfeld. Um, you know, I'm just going to make some random moves here, here. I'm, obviously, this is not the only line, but, you know, it's a pretty common line here, here. Okay, this is just a, an idea I want to share with everyone. In this specific position, okay, there is this move bishop f4, among many other moves. If you look at the statistics, huge. e4 is big, queen c2 is big, bishop f4 is played as well. Now, look at this position carefully. And the eval here is actually black is completely fine. Both bishop takes c3 and c6 are good enough. OK, again, this is completely unrelated to the, the exchange carry. This is kind of like a little bonus I want to throw in there for you. 
because we have time left. Okay, so make a mental image of this position. You know that bishop takes c3 is completely safe for black. c6 is also playable, also quite safe. Even this move has been tried nice c4. Well, guess what? Let's go back here. Remember this key position. Now, for those who are Grunfeld players, and they still want to play Grunfeld like against c4. So what are they going to play? They're going to play here. Let's say I play g3. They're going to play g6. Now, if they play bishop g7, it's going to be difficult to get this knight d5, knight b6, Grunfeld. They have to play c6. But let's say they go here, d5. Uh, right here, sorry, d5. All right. I take, take, knight here, knight b6. Now, here's the trick. You may not be aware of this trick. There is this move, very rare, but this h pawn is popular almost in every opening, h4. Guess what the most common reply to h4 is? h6, top move. Okay, and most people, okay, most people will play d3. Yeah, top of, yeah, leg one, play d3. Okay, this is just a normal, you know, why it's trying to play English style. But guess what? Let me just play this move knight of three for a second. Almost no games. You see only a couple of games. Uh, this is different Botvinnik, by the way. Mikhail, this is 2300. This is not our Botvinnik, the world champion. Okay, so let's say they play bishop g7. Um, now I play d4. Or castle, I don't know. The move order may not matter that much. Castles, castles. Okay. Knight c6. Okay. d5. Knight a5, bishop f4. There's one game. Okay, there's one grandmaster game in here, Birchich. Okay. Now, everything is exactly the same. Exactly the same, except we've just moved this pawn to h4 and this pawn to h6. The eval of this position goes from, you know, as we know with the pawn on h2, h7, completely fine for black to black is almost lost. Okay, <laughs> I'm not kidding. You can check this with the engine. And the key idea, okay, is what happened in this game. After the move c6, the tempo queen c1 is the deciding factor. This is very important, okay? So Keaton, actually, he's a good friend of mine. He went to UTD. Uh, he's a strong IM. He took on d5. Look what happened, how bad black's position got. Knight takes, queen takes, bishop takes h6. Oops, that pawn is gone. Knight c4, okay, he's trying to be active, but after takes, takes, tempo on the queen, tempo on the queen, the queen is a no man's land. h5, white gets a decisive advantage. You can check it with the engines if you want, but it's uh, something insane, like more than plus four, I would say, <laughs> you know, the attack is just unstoppable. These guys are nowhere to be seen. So again, systematic opening approach is the key to chess. You know, I show you the, the London transposing to the Karakon exchange, understanding the, the nuances of the Karakon exchange with this H3 and H4. And here I show you yet another opening where with the pawns on H2, H7, black is fine. With the pawns on H4, H6, black is close to busted, okay? So I hope you guys, when you learn openings, at least will pay, will pay attention to these nuances and it's all about nuances at the highest level. All right, thank you guys. Yeah, small differences can make big, big differences, exactly. All right, bye guys, thank you again.